Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Hello to all the... Yes. Anyway, we are in Parashat uh, Beshalach. As we all know, it's a very powerful parasha. The reason it's powerful parasha, within this parasha, we have a revelation of uh, a lot of major things. Usually in each lecture, you have one major idea. In this lecture, there is many of them. I choose to talk about maybe three, maybe four. We will see how that's going to go. All right? And there is three major things we're going to talk about. The first is getting out of Egypt. Okay, basically that's what's happening in this week, Parasha, and the splitting of the Red Sea. And by the way, the Red Sea is not red, just to make sure you know. And then after that, we have the singing, the Az Yashir, as a second subject, the singing, the gratitude that the Jewish people had right after the get out of Egypt. And the third one is the Amalek, the fighting of the Amalek, together with Shabbat, together with the Mana. It's all condensed into one subject, even the third one seemed to be three. It's actually one. And of course, there is a secret of something called the Ein Bet Shemot, the 72 names of God, which is something I'm not going to talk about tonight, but I hope you're going to search more about it and you're going to find more secret about that, that matter. Now, Yetziat Mitzrayim. We know that Yetziat Mitzrayim, the exit of, or out of Egypt, mentioned about 50 times in the Torah. And there is a reason why it's mentioned 50 times in the Torah. Because 50, 50, the number 50 is stand for the letter Nun. The letter Nun representing the Bina. Bina is the whole idea of freedom. For that reason, there is the Jubilee. There is the whole idea of 50 years, the servant, the slave, and so on and so on. But the whole secret about it is remember, it's a place called Bina. B-I-N-A. You don't have to memorize it or remember, but at least you need to understand that there is a consciousness, there is a place, there is an awareness, a place that when you tap into that place, you are free. You can only be free if you tap into Bina. If you don't tap into Bina, you're still a slave. Now the question is, how do you tap into Bina? Well, very simple. You're going to have to get out of Egypt. Now, what does that mean to get out of Egypt? What if we're not in Egypt? What if we're in New York? So does that mean if I cross the Queensboro Bridge? Or if I'm going to go to Great Neck, I'm free? What is the secret of that freedom? I need to find out the freedom. What is this whole idea yet see at me time? So this secret is kind of profound. There is three layers to that secret. I'm going to share the, the meaning of the secret in a simple way, even there is so much more to study about it, okay? So just to let you know, most Kabbalists, when they, when they study this matter, it takes days. It's a lot, a lot of details, a lot of secret. I'm going to condense it, and I will do the best I can uh, to be clear on that, and uh, hopefully it will be clear. There is a concept. In Kabbalah, and I will do the best I can to explain it in a funny, fun way, and simple. There is a concept in Kabbalah called Tzimtzum. The concept of Tzimtzum relates to the idea, you can call it in English, uh, contraction, uh, restriction, what else you can do. Uh, uh, you know the shutter in the camera called Tzimtzum. So this is the shutter, okay? What is Tzimtzum, basically? The creator, bless be he, want to share everything. Now, what is everything? How much is everything? How much is everything? When somebody want to share everything, it seems like everything you got, that's the everything. What is if everything you got never had as an end? True, we cannot imagine it. We can just imagine that we cannot imagine it. Right? We agree on that. We imagine that we can never imagine what mean the word end less. Okay, endless. We cannot imagine something like this. So what is the idea of Tzimtzum? Basically, the creator is Metzamtzem. Basically, it's contract. So the light or the blessing can come in a way that I can relate to it. The only problem with that, if there is Tzimtzum, if there is a concept that I cannot receive anymore, then I will not receive what the creator want to give me. So if the creator want to give me joy, endless amount of joy, endless amount of money, endless amount of safety, endless amount of everything... I cannot receive it because I signed a contract before I was born, before the universe was created, that I will not receive it. That concept called Tzimtzum. Tzimtzum. Mm -hmm. Now, in that concept called Tzimtzum, you are in a slave mode. You are in Egypt. Egypt was giving you whatever you want in a metzumtzum, meaning in a, in a certain way which is going to be restricted, not a lot. You want it as it you want. Kishuim, you want zucchini, lama lo. 
Betzalim, onion, on me. If you remember when the servant, slave, getting out of Egypt, what did they say actually? Zacharnu, we remember how everything used to be for free. If you, if you read the, 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 the Torah, it's there. How can a slave, you know, try to imagine a slave getting out of the land of, of being slave, his grandfather was a slave, his mother and father was a slave. They're getting out of Egypt, like, thank God we out. They're sitting there, ah, you remember the watermelon of Egypt? You remember the onion? Ah, let me tell you, it was free, don't forget, it was free. How can that be? There is something that we don't understand about slavery then. We think slavery and uh, a lot of people do Passover dinner. Unfortunately, a lot of people are doing it like Thanksgiving dinner, but they call it Passover. <laughs> what does that mean? It, it means there is a meal, there is everybody reading the Agada, you know, and then, then they read, but uh, what are you doing? What is it going out of Egypt? What is getting out of Egypt? A lot of us thinking that when we get what we want, when we want it, we're free. When you get what you want, when you want it and you keep wanting it and you can never stop what you want and you keep praying for what you want and you keep chasing what you want, you are nothing more than a slave. When you go to the synagogue and hold the sidur and say, Ana Hashem, Oshi Ana, Ana Hashem, Atli Hana, if you're Sephardic, or if you say the prayer of the Berdichov, if you're Ashkenaz, and you are wishing for a better week. Me, 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 and myself, and my family, and my daughter, and my son. I want them to get married. I want them to have partners. I want this, I want this, and that. Slave. What is this not being a slave? How do I get it out of it? Aha. The idea of not being a slave called in Kabbalah, it's called Tzimtzum Bet. Second type of Tzimtzum. And second of Tzimtzum, say like that. You can only receive joy if you were able to reflect it. You can only ask for a certain thing if you'll be able to push it for the second person. If everything that you want is for you, it's not gonna work, it's gonna create symptom aleph, which means it will be contracted, the true freedom that you will receive. You will receive what you want. You want Ferrari, you're gonna have it. You're gonna have it. You want money, you're gonna have it. You're never gonna enjoy it a bit. You want to get married, you will have it. You will get divorced right after that. You want a soulmate, you're going to meet them. But you will never know it's them. That's called Tzim Tzum Aleph. Tzim Tzum. Yeah. It's coming, but you're not capturing it. Tzim Tzum Bet is telling you, you have two choices. One choice that whatever you want to wish for you, it's if somebody else has to benefit. Or if you want on a higher level, it's different time, right? You wanted to go to the high level, then you have to do Nachatuach Yotzu, meaning that I want to receive everything I want to receive because I know I'm a joy it's giving the Creator. So now my father want to give me a cheesecake. But listen, I don't like cheesecake. I don't. I like apple strudel. That's what I like. But not, please, not cheesecake. But your father give you. What are you going to do now? You want to please your father. So now you take the cheesecake and say, thank you, father. Thank you for the cheesecake. You take a bite. You do a bracha. And then you do, it's called lasot, nachat, It's called tzim tzim bet. Getting out of Egypt, my friend, was not getting out of a country. Egypt is internally according to Kabbalah. Paro is internally. Everything is within our system. Yes. And I'm in the rush, you tell me the Pshuto, meaning this whole story also happened, but that's not the main story. Getting out of Egypt, and now we're going to remember what happened to us, and then we read it in Agada. When you do Pesach this year, please, please, think about where you want to get out of. Where are you stuck thinking about yourself? Where are you stuck thinking about the selfishness? Where in your life, it's all about the ego, and there is nothing to do with how can I share. If you're still stuck, and that's what we call Tzim Tzum Aleph, unfortunately, you're going to be stuck. And it doesn't matter if you do another Passover, and you eat another matzah. What does matzah stand for? Very good, Tzim Tzum. Matzah Tzim Tzum. Now you know why you eat matzah. Matzah Tzim Tzum, matzah Tzim Tzum. Same idea. So you are metzam tzim. Why, why you don't let it rise? 18 minutes maximum, right? Those of you who ever bake, I don't know how many bake. You put over water, flour, there. boom, boom, oven. Have to be, yeah, out. 18 minutes from beginning to end. Why? Because once it's rise, it's going to be a bread. What is going to be a bread? It's a problem. It's ego. Ooh, I'm big. The matzah, the same way you put it in the oven, the same way it's coming out. No change. 
flat, no ego, no nothing. If you're capable of working on yourself not to receive, for you, you're out of Egypt. If you, everything you do, it doesn't matter if you're dati or not dati, it doesn't matter if you're religious or not religious. In fact, if the person is religious, and in the name of religion, the person starts thinking, what can I get from out of that religion? It's worse than the person who's not religious. Yeah. I want to repeat it. Make sure the camera get it. If the person is now never been religious, never do anything the Torah said, okay? And, com- and, then, uh, and then he become religious. And he continue being selfish is worse than he was before. How can that be? Because he's using this all religion to get what he wants. How do we, I know it's true? It's not my idea. The Gemara is saying that when a person do Torah Lishma, meaning he study Torah Lishma, it's a chaim, nestalo it's a chaim. What if he doesn't do the Torah? What if he doesn't do nestalo sama It becomes the drug of death. How can our Torah can become drug of death? Because you're using the Torah, what? You're always thinking, how can I get to Echal HaMelech? How do I get to the chamber of the king to get what I want? You're a ganav, you're a thief. You're using the method, the same method Hashem teaching us what to do. And then you're thinking how to get into the chamber and take what you want. I can have diamond, I can have a soulmate, I can have health, I can have good things for my family. All about me, me and myself, by using spiritual tools. And you're calling it getting out of Egypt. On Passover, before Passover, everybody got to sit with himself and say, where in my life I was Selfish. With who? Was I selfish? Is it my wife? Is it my husband? Is it my neighbor? Everybody got asked this question. So the whole idea of getting out of Egypt, I want to repeat, is the concept of understanding that we're jumping out of that consciousness, of that idea, of that selfishness, of that egoism, and get into altruism. Otherwise, we're not different than Paro. We're not different than Mitzrayim. It's very important we remember that. Now, as they're getting out of Egypt, they're getting to a place called, what is it called in Hebrew? Yam? Suf. Very good. What does Suf stand for? Suf? Suf and, and also it's a bamboo. Suf meaning a bamboo. So why do they call it the red? Where did they come up with the Red Sea? Maybe the reflection of the mountain. So man, why they don't do the same in Malibu? Malibu also has a reflection of the mountain. <laughs> Should be the Red Sea, maybe it's there. Uh, uh, mountain. No, but it's the sea of reeds. reeds, very good. The Sea of Reeds. So Reeds is actually bamboo stick. This is the same name. So that's where the name comes from. That's where the name comes from. But the couple is relating it into Yam Sof, like somebody say it. Yam Sof, like end Sof, like the endless. So basically, they're coming to a Sof. And then the sea split to 12 lines, the Zohar, Zohar Hadash, and Beshalak saying to us, and every tribe going to the tribe. Can you imagine? Hey, Reuven tribe on your right. Hey, how you doing? Shimon, uh, next to him. Please, Yehuda, you're the fourth one. Beautiful. You see 12 tribe going to 12 shvilim in the, in the water. Let's understand how that happened. First, I cannot tell you the whole secret, but I can tell you that Moses used a method called the 72 names of God. You can read a lot about it. I'm sure online there is a fake information on that and there is good information on that. I'm sorry, you have to read both. And then you're going to find that's real, that's not real, that's up to you, the job. But it's a long lecture. One time you want to meet with me, i show you how the 72 name of God work. What is Moses telling, what is Moses telling actually, what is Moses telling Kadosh Baruch Hu, the Kush Abrihu, meaning the, the creator, what is, about, what is about to cross the Red Sea? What is he saying? What is he telling? Moshe Rabbeinu is screaming to God, screaming, Titzak, Itzak, Itzak, sometimes it means to pray. But he's screaming, God! You know what God answered? God is acting not polite. But it's like a lie. But it's like a lie. In Hebrew, it's funny. Like, whoever is Israel, it's kind of a funny. But it's like a lie. What are you about? But it's like a lie. Wow. Why are you yelling to me? So I would like to bring you a perush of my, one of my favorite rabbi. There's two rabbi I follow, Rabbi Yehuda Ashlai and Rabbi Yehuda Tzvi Brandwein, the Stratton. Okay? And uh, I had the privilege to work with his grandson. I still work with his grandson. And together we came up with this book. Those of you, you can, I'm sure you can find it somehow. So it's say like this. 
מה תצעק אליי? He's asking a question. כאן רבו התמיעות, there is a lot of wonder. אליי, נראה כמיותרת. Why is it written, מה תצעק אליי? Why are you yelling? Why does it say, why are you yelling to me? Is God have to say, why are you yelling? God doesn't have to say, why are you yelling to me? It's enough to say, why are you yelling? But you don't have to put the words, to and me. There is no, there is no point to add that word. Why are you yelling, you know, to me? It was enough to say, why are you yelling? It doesn't have to be more than that. Why say to me? נראה מילת אליי כמיותרת, כי למי היה לו לצעוק ולהתפלל? Who do you want Moses to pray to? Who do you want Moses to pray to? And why does it say אליי? שנית השאלה, מה תצעק? שנית השאלה, מה תצעק? אוקיי? מה תצעק? Why you yelling? גם כן פליאה. It's also a wonder. It's also a wonder, כי מה יעשו בני ישראל בצרתם אם לא לצעוק ולהתפלל? What do you want from us to do when we have problem? Should we not pray? Should we not scream? We have problem. We have the Egyptian behind us, want to kill us. We have the Red Sea in front of us. It doesn't seem like there is a solution for that situation. Mati tzak elai. So when we look at the Zohar in Peshalach, the Zohar give a weird answer. That's the weird answer the Zohar give. Be'atika tal yamilta. Mati tzak elai, be'atika tal yamilta. Atika, by the way, those of you who don't know, without going to details, Atika is the head of Atzilut, is the second of it of Atzilut. There is two heads to Atzilut, Arichan, Pin, Atika, without going to details, but let's, let's just say, Atika, Tal, Yamilta. V'anyanu, Sh'ashem itbarach hora le-Moshe Rabbeinu, Ed Rachav. So Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, I'm going to show you the way. I'm going to show you the way. Say, if you're doing well, everything is okay. If you don't do well, nothing is going to be okay. So, why is Moshe praying to Hashem, to Kutsha Baruch Hu, and Kutsha Baruch Hu, God is telling him, what do you want from me? Why are you yelling to me? Who is that to me? In the translation, that to me, to and me, meaning a lie. But it's not as we think it is. A lie stands for something very different. In Kabbalah, the word a lie, the word a lie stands for a certain level. Every time you pray, every morning when you pray, every afternoon, evening, you are actually praying to a system that called that system called the Eranpin. The Eranpin is a system, the regular system, what we call the Yud Kevavke, what we call the Kucha Barichu, is a certain level, but it's not that level that can create the miracle of, of splitting of the Red Sea. For that miracle, you have to climb above that level called Eli. And that place that you want to climb to is called Atika. You want a miracle? You want things to happen beyond your understanding. You have to tap into place which is beyond your capability even to understand that it's there. And that place called Atika. How do you get there? And that's what he writes. If you want to make a miracle, there is a menu. There is an ingredient how to make a miracle. How do you create a miracle? How do you actually create that miracle? How do you create miracle beyond the level of expectation? Look what the answer is giving here. And the answer is giving here is really shocking but very important. It's telling you that there is two ingredients to create miracle. Okay? One of them is called Mesirut Nefesh. Mesirut Nefesh, which means self-sacrifice. And second is unity. Achdut. You need to have those two ingredients in your life if you want to create a miracle. What is self-sacrifice? How does self-sacrifice look like? Is, is when, a, when, a, when, a, when a terrorist put a bomb on his body and he's ready to die, that's a self-sacrifice? No. He sacrifices everybody else but himself. He happened to die there, but he's not, if he find a way not to kill himself, he would be happy. But he find a way like this to kill as many people as possible. Self-sacrifice meaning that you no longer, you are not longer the main idea in the room. You're not the most important person. I know a lot of people are addicted to justice. I meet a lot of people during the day. This is all what they're looking for. Justice. Ah, justice. Justice. I mean, you never live in LA, so you don't know LA or Malibu. You don't know. I mean, in, in LA... Uh, I'm, 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 in my job, you know, I'm, I'm doing that, but I'm also most of the day I'm a coach, so I'm getting uh, 
spiritual coach, rabbinical coach, whatever you want to call it. So people come to see me with a lot of problem. And uh, when you get clients from Los Angeles, it's mostly who sue who first and what they're suing them for. This is how it works. I'm going to sue you for that. And then I have to read the whole thing because I have to give them advice. And he sue him that. Ah, on the October 17th, you sue me. On November 2nd, I'm going to sue you for suing me. And then there is an endless amount of everybody suing everybody. And I feel like, who's benefit? Like, somebody going to make money off of it. Is it the judge? Is it the law? Maybe the lawyer? I don't know who's, who's somebody is happy in that, in that fight. Or oh, sometimes you have husband and wife. You know, two people happen to be husband and wife, 47th Street. It happened many years ago, so you would not remember that. So two husband and wife. And one day they say, it's enough is enough. We don't want to be together. Ooh. And they start suing each other. And then she called the store in the name that they called the store one. And he called the store, whatever he called the name without saying the name, two. So, and then the fight began. And they were going after it. And coincidentally, I went there at that time before I married my wife to look for a ring, you know. And for the wedding, you cannot have diamond on the ring. It's very simple, uh, you know, what do you call it? Like just a round thing that you put on the hand. So I'm coming in and say, excuse me, I don't know if I'm the right store. It seemed too fancy for me. I'm only looking for that thing, you know, band. for the wedding. What do you call it? Band? Wedding band. Wedding band. Yeah, wedding band. And he pulled the wedding band. And uh, he said, excuse me, can we make a deal? I said, deal? You want to make a deal with me? Okay. What deal do you want to make? So I'll tell you something. I give you the ring for free. You just, I want you to go and spy on across the street. That's my husband's store. So spying? Spying for what? I, I, I just, I just want to know who, who's the client there and what's going on. And this is that. And not only I give you a ring, I give you more than that. You just have to say, I'm not doing it. So why? And I said, you know what? Let's make a deal. So you want to make a deal with me? Say, yes. You tell me the story. What happened? And then she told me the story. Painful. Don't want to repeat the details. I said, okay, I hear you. I said, do you mind I go to the other side? I said, you go. I go to the other side. I said, no, she heard me first. And he tell me his story. I said, okay, 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 okay. Now we have two stories. I said, do you mind I, I make a bridge and we can talk? I mean, that's what I do for work. I mean, can we, can we arrange and talk? So, okay, we're ready, but we're not going to see each other from far. So, okay, I'm sending message, sending letter. And then, Baruch Hashem, the lawyer didn't make that much money. What I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you, self-sacrifice is not only when you're about to die. Self-sacrifice is sometimes you got to take the ego and you got to let go. You have to say what's more important for you. To have a good peace of mind and have a good life and kind of have, ah, life is good or you're going to be right. In the end, once you're going to be right, you ever went to court when somebody win? You ever look at people after they win? I, I, I do that because I have to go with them a lot of time. After they win, they get out of it. They say, I got him. I got him. And then you ask them that question. If you're there, are you happy? Not yet, not yet. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm, I'm happy because I'm right. What happened to you? What happened? Your parents never told you you're right. You go fight with everybody you see. What happened to you? I mean, what are you doing? You're wasting all your money just that everybody tell you you're right because your mother never told you you're right. So now you're going to win. What's wrong with you? Mati Takela, you want to create miracle? Ramvando and telling you a way to create miracle. Let it go. Let go of that need to be right. Let go of the need to be justified, whatever you do. Let go of that. Just let it go. Just let it go. And then Pharaoh will let you go. Then Egypt will let you go. Then you can get out of Egypt. I mean, I don't know if you get this notice. I got it when I was young. You know, that people come here to born. I don't know if you get the second. Some people don't get the second letter. And to die. I, but some of you kind of, no, we we, we are forever. No, no, it, it's work. I don't know. You know, I don't know if you follow me. There is a birth. Birth when you're born. Mother. Remember that? Born, that's your birthday. And then there is the day that you... Go away. <laughs> I think a lot of people forget that... Uh, yeah. There is a, another part. Because if you remember that you are, you are in a... Uh, what do you call it? The milk when, they, when it's no longer good. What are you saying? The, 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 what's, what's it? No. the expiration. I don't, I don't think people believe they actually have an expiration date. <laughs> on the, on the, I think people don't want to listen to it because even they know, they will look at life differently. Hey, wait a minute. That's the day 
And that's the expiration. If there is expiration, I'm going to waste my time on what? On being right? No way! I'm going to invest in being happy. I'm here to be happy. That's what I'm here to do. And I'm going to find whatever tools to make me happy. So what is like a lie? We need Mesirut Nefesh of that Gava, of that ego. We must, we must sacrifice it. We must let it go. We must. Not for the other person. If you lose in a certain competition, if you lose in a certain debate in the court and all that, it doesn't mean always you lose. Sometimes you let it go. Try it one time. Please try it. When you have an argument with someone, try in the middle of the argument in your mind. Say, you know what? I'm going to let go of this conversation. I'm going to smile and I'm going to tell them you're right. Try it one time. Do it once a month even. And then look at their eyes and say, you know what? You're right. What do you care? You are inviting a miracle to happen. That's, that's the splitting of the Red Sea from a spiritual point of view. Now, after that, we have something amazing. We have the singing while they're crossing the Red Sea. It's called Az Yashir Moshe of Israel. Who wrote the words to that? Miriam. Miriam wrote? Not necessarily. Who wrote the words for Az Yashir? They say that the angels, together with Bnei Israel, get Ruach HaKodesh, more than Nicheskel, more than Ezekiel. And the words were basically within their soul, and everybody sing it together as Ruach HaKodesh. And it's written, when a, when a person actually say Az Yashir, when they pray, they say Az Yashir Moshe, with Simcha, all the negative thing that they might have to go through in their life are going to get cancelled. On Shabbat, I'm talking about Shabbat. When you say the Az Yashir, if you want to say the one prayer that you want to say with happiness and it removes negativity, on Shabbat, Az Yashir. Now you need to believe me. Or you need to believe the Zohar. Or you need to believe Rabbi Isaac Luria. Or you need to believe something. What about if a person born don't want to believe nothing? Everybody have different Egypt. Somebody wake up in the morning, they don't want to believe just people, I, I don't like emuna. I only like yediyah. Yediyah meaning knowledge. I like to know. I like to understand. What about to believe? What is, what is happening to people who have a difficult time to believe? Because it's like me, driver, I have an issue if I sit next to the driver. You know, I have that issue. I'm going to look at the mirror. I'm going to take the cosmetic mirror, making sure that everything's okay. I have trust issue. What's happening? Years ago, when I start flying, you know, from Israel, Tel Aviv, that, and I start finding myself putting the leg on the brake, <laughs> got to stop it. This is too much turbulence. And, and my wife, you know, an airplane, and people are watching. Oh, I'm so, so happy. <laughs> Just, so those of you who have control issue, of course you're not going to believe. If you're born with a control disease, like me and others, you can you can let go. And when you cannot let go, you cannot have a muna. You cannot have a muna. You cannot have faith. You cannot have certainty. It's a kashe. Bnei Israel, Baruch Hashem, it's a what make the Jewish people, Jewish people, two ingredients. One, it's in the Talmud, ma'aminim b'nei ma'aminim. They are believer, children of believer. Second thing, they call them Yehudim, Jew, because it's come from Yehuda. What is Yehuda? Yodu chachecha, odaya, lagi toda, to say thank you. How is the Jewish people wake up in the morning? Wake up in the morning? What the first thing you say? Before everything. Mode, mode. We say thank you. But nothing happened yet. That's why I'm saying thank you. Thank you. You know, some people say, I just woke up. So I'm saying thank you for wake up. Mm -hmm. The beauty is to start the day with thank you, everything will fall. But if you start the day with a, with a uh, you know, complain and everybody is like a kvetch. I, I'm sorry, kvetch mean like, a, you know what a kvetch? Like, like, like a grape become a raisin. That's a kvetch. Mm -hmm. Okay, like uh, nothing worked. Uh, Pull me in the, not working. How do you get, how do you get to that attitude of having appreciation and odaya like they have on the Yam Suf? Because if a person is not going to be in odaya, if the person is not going to be always thankful, always in gratitude, unfortunately, listen carefully, whatever you have is in danger. Don't worry if the thing you don't have yet. Make a list of all the things you love about your life. Just make a list. You want to keep it there? Say thank you. When the last time you look at your hand and say, hey, thank you. Thank you so much for serving me. I like that finger. I like this one too. I like all of them. Thank you. Thank you so much for being so kind to me. 
When the last time you thank your leg? Thank you for carrying me. Thank you, my ankles. Thank you. Thank you. When you have this odaya, beginning with yourself, then with others, thank you, my surrounding. Thank you, my neighbor. Your attitude starts to change. And I would like to tell you a story. This is what makes Rabbi Kalibach so famous was this story. He was famous before, of course, with many music, many story. But this story is kind of long. I'm going to condense it into short because of time. And the story is about uh, uh, a gentleman, a very uh, uh, wealthy gentleman by the name of Yossi. That's his name, Joseph. His name is Joseph. And uh, uh, Joseph, a uh, super wealthy person, who live in a bad neighborhood. The bad neighborhood, everybody is poor. Everybody is poor. So now the poor people, the poor people always have hope one time to get a good tzedakah, a good charity. So every time, you know, somebody wake up in the morning and say, I think I, I, I'm going to get Yossi. I'm going to go to Yossi and ask for good tzedakah, good charity. Tzedakah means charity. And I'm going to get some good money for my family. It's a poor neighborhood. Everybody has some dream. And everybody witnessed the same thing. When they go to get the tzedakah, they go to get charity, you know, and they knock on the door. Then uh, Yossi Lee asked them for their name. <coughs> then after he asked them, he asked for, for the name. Uh, he said, where do you live? And as I live, he said, now, what do you want? And they say, well, you know, I would be happy if you give me 100 rubles. <laughs> Something like about under dollar, under ruble, it will be good enough for me for the week and, you know, it's a, some food. And he looked at them and said, how dare you? That's way too much money. So he opened the door and said, get out of here. And everybody go and then the other poor people said, so what happened? He said, oh, what happened? Exactly what you told me, that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. And everybody try from time to time. And one day, the poor start, every time he pass by the market, they tell him, listen, you'll see. If you're not going to be part of the community, who's going to bury you? Who's going to take care of you? What's wrong with you? You have to be part of community. You got to donate. You have money. You're good with money. We have other area. We, we're good with that. Help. Help. A little bit to say no. So what are you going to do? Who's going to bury you? He said, this is not your problem. Time go by. He got sick. Your sis got sick. Really sick. So he go to the people and say, it seems like it's the end of the road. It's a time to departure, expiration date, if you want to call it. And um, they, he, said, he said to them, listen, I'm going to give you right now 500 ruble to the old village, which is nothing. And this is going to make you in charge of the burial. So you're not ashamed. You're worth about 5 million rubles, and you give us 500 rubles, you're cheap. Do something. He said, that's, that's what I can afford. I'm sorry, I can't give you. That's it. That's what I then he go to his house. Everybody's so angry. Everybody's so upset. And you know, there is miracle. Always in the Jewish community, when it's come to tzedakah, when it's come to charity, there's always miracle. So every, every uh, Thursday night, usually after, after 10 p.m., after 11 p.m., there is always, under the door, there is always envelope, and in the envelope there is 10 rubles, 5 rubles, everybody gives something. So at least it keeps them to buy a little challah, a little wine, so life, life is better. Time go by, unfortunately Yosseli die. Nobody want to bury it. A Jewish body is out there, nobody buried the body. Within the city there is a famous Kabbalist, Rav Kalman, whoever knows the name, of Kalman is a very famous Kabbalist. So you heard about all of it. He gets out of the study. He say, what's, what's happening? I heard there's a lot of fight, a lot of problem. What is going on? And they tell him, listen, this is Friday. Today is Friday. And we have nothing to eat. So what do you mean you have nothing to eat? So, so how did you eat yesterday? What did you do last week? He said, Rabbi, we have to tell you something. Every Thursday night, we get an envelope under the door with sometimes 10 rubles, sometimes 15 rubles. Everybody gets a certain amount. And with that, I manage to buy whatever I need to buy to eat for Shabbat. So Shabbat is wonderful. Like this, my Shabbat is wonderful. That's how I live. And then you go one person, second, five, under, 200 people, 300 people. The rabbi say, what is going on? What, what is happening? And I say, why are you screaming at that rich man house? He said, because he doesn't want to give money to bury him. Shame on him. He says, 
the rabbi said, please tell me the story about him again. So the old poor people, 500 of them, say the same story. We go to his house. He take our address. He take our names. He ask us how much money we need, and then he kick us out from the house. But we have to tell you, a miracle happened because he humiliated us right after that, a Thursday night, we have an envelope with money under our door. The rabbi being a Kabbalist, he said, bring the body, we bury him right now. The whole community said, what are you talking about? He said, please, right now. They bring the body and the, 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 they do the ceremony, they do whatever they need to do. And they bury the body. And that moment, the rabbi said, nobody should leave the cemetery right now. We have to ask a rabbi. He called him Rav Yossi. Rav Yossi. For forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So Rabbi, what are you talking about? I said, please listen to me. He said to them, this Rabbi that you're looking at, he is the one who giving you the money for more than 20 years. He never wants you to know about it because it's Matan Baseta. It's a real tzedakah. He wants to make sure that you can never say thank you to him. So he pray and meditate and pray and meditate and pray and meditate until the soul of the Rabbi elevated, like the Jose of Lovlin used to do. And then he meet the rabbi, he meet Rav Yossi. He said, Rav Yossi, what have you done to us? You give us a judgment on us. We didn't even say thank you to you. We judge you. We hate you. We, we be a bad to you. He said, Rabbi, that's the way I want it. I want to live my life like that. I want to live my life in a way I don't want to be liked by people. I want to do the mitzvah of charity without the person see that it's me. That's what I want to do. This is what's my life dream. And you know, I'm, I'm now, they invite me in heaven to different chambers. I don't know if you know in heaven, you have different chambers. They invite me to the chamber of Abraham. I'm allowed to go to the chamber of Isaac, Jacob. King David is singing and dancing all the time and I'm allowed to go there. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai with the Zohar. I'm allowed to go wherever I want. He said, but I tell you, Rabbi, Kalman, there is one thing I don't have here. I don't have poor people. I don't have poor people. I don't have those broken doors on Thursday night when I used to go door to door. And nobody knew that I was there in the winter and I used to put the envelope under. I, don't, I can't do it anymore. In heaven, I have everything. Everything seemed to be perfect. And that's what I don't have. And, and now I have so much gratitude for that time that I used to do that. So please send the people home and thank them for giving me the opportunity to give charity. My friend, this story is one of the most famous stories. You should hear it better from Rav Karlibach. Way better than I tell it. <coughs> And uh, it's called uh, Yoseli Kamtsan Kodesh, the Holy Miser. And he he's even tell you where he's buried. He's buried in Poland. There is actually a tree under the cemetery. My wife and me went there, even we had two hours there. Said, we got to go there in Poland. And there is a grave. And say, Yoseli Kamtsan Kodesh, meaning Yoseli the Holy Miser. A Kamtsan Kodesh. That's how they call him. It's an amazing, uh, amazing place to go, an amazing place to appreciate. Why am I telling you this story? Gratitude comes from giving. You want to have gratitude for what you have? You got to teach yourself how to give more. And when you give, try to stay away from thank you. If you're capable to stay away from the thank you for people finding out you're actually giving, you're always going to stay in the mood of being happy or having gratitude. But if you always give and you're looking around who saw you, then the validation you're looking for is human. And that's when you're not doing it for yourself. You are pleasing people. You're not giving to people. There's a big difference between pleasing and giving. Pleasing comes from the need of validation of human, humanity and giving coming from the need for me to connect to my soul, to connect to the creator. This is what giving needs to be. And if you only give it for the sake of people to appreciate you, you're not going to get the happiness you're looking for. You want to be happy, learn to give. The art of giving is to give. To give from your heart, yes, but it's not enough. Why do you give? That's a very important. So this is the old story of... The idea of Az Yashir. When you see Az Yashir, Az, you know what Az means? Then. 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 It's Az Shar. It's supposed to be Az Shar. Then Moses sang. Now I say Yashir. You know what Yashir in Hebrew does you speak Hebrew mean? I will sing in the future. The Arizal teaching us that this song has the energy within it of Biata Mashir of the end of time. Within this song, there is all the secret. I cannot go into this right now. It's all the secret of Beata Mashiach. Last thing, but not least, I will give time to question in the end, if you want, because there's few subjects. I thought it would take less time. When people 
אז ישיר דו סיגי אז דה גו, אז דה גו טו דה ווטר, אז ישיר משה, אבל דה ביוטיפול איז, איט וואס נבו איי, איט וואס פרופסי, אביבדי וואס וואן, דה אנג'ל וואס וואן, אביבדי וואס וואן, אה, ביוטיפול. We have three things in the end of the parasha. One is called Amalek. One is talking about the Shabbat together with the manna. What is the manna? Manna is the food of the angels. Why the Jewish people had some difficult time with the manna? Because it was missing one thing. It was a great gift, but it's missing one thing. What was the manna missing? The ability to earn it. The ability to earn it. If you cannot earn something, whatever you're going to get, not going to make you happy. If I'm going to buy you a thousand pieces of puzzles, right? A puzzle with a thousand pieces, and I'm going to make it for you, you're going to be extremely happy. No, you're not. You're going to be, thank you for the gift, goodbye. If you have a terrible relationship with someone, and now you fix that relationship, you're going to be extremely happy. If you have just a relationship that nothing going on, You read Wall Street, she's reading, I don't know, New York Times, and you're sitting in the same room and you never have an argument and everything. You have nothing to work on. Nothing. The earning part is the gift of Hashem. So when Hashem wants to give the Bnei Israel the manna, manu, manu, what are we going to do with it? My nukvi, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with this? What am I, how do I earn it? How do I do something with that? And for that reason, God tells them, there is one thing you can earn. Don't go on Shabbat. And look for it. Can we make a deal? Say, of course. We're not going to look for that food on Shabbat. During the six days, there is manna on Shabbat. I give you twice as much. You don't need to look for it. Some of the people were not listening to that order. And for that reason, they broke the Shabbat. Because they broke the Shabbat, Vayavo Amalek. So for, for we need to talk, what is Shabbat then? What is Shabbat? Without going to details. What is Shabbat? What is the idea of keeping Shabbat? Keeping Shabbat. It seems like Shabbat seems to be very weak and fragile, that we need to keep it, right? You keep it, you need to have a guard. Shomer Shabbat, that's what it's called. Shomer Shabbat, Shomer. Who is the Shomer? Why? Because Shabbat is very weak. You got to be Shomer on it, right? I mean, that's how it translates to. Shabbat is kind of a weak little, little person, and we come to Shomer on it. No. Unfortunately, the translation of those words are very sad, you know, and very being corrupted by... Think it in a religious way and translate those words as it is. Shabbat is the one thing, one thing, that if you do, it saves you from any judgment. If you're suffering from anything, start consider Shabbat. If you didn't yet get into Shabbat and to the old details of Shabbat, you didn't yet felt the true essence of your soul. Why you call Shabbat me'en? What do we say? Me'en olam abba. What does the Baal Shem Tov say about it? Ma'ayan Olam Abba is the spring of Olam Abba. It's what coming from above to below. Shabbat is matana. You can never earn it. You can never earn Shabbat. You cannot do it as you want. You cannot do Shabbat on Tuesday. I think to do Shabbat on Tuesday. And then another Shabbat on Shabbat. Can be. Why? Because it's a gift. Whatever is a gift from the Creator, you cannot create it. It's availability. 25 hours. Whatever you're going to do with that 25 hours. define how your next week gonna look like if you know what you're doing if you don't know what you're doing and you just robotically do the Shabbat keep the Shabbat whatever you want to call it so those of you let's say you have struggled with religion you struggle with spirituality you struggle with everything stick to one thing Shabbat no matter what happened one hour before Shabbat get ready that's it two hours before Shabbat if you can get ready three hours before Shabbat get ready Five hours from the sunrise, get ready then. That's the best way. Once the sunrise, see what the time sunrise, count five hours, I'm ready for Shabbat from that moment. If you can do that, you're not going to have Amalek in your life. Amalek stands for the concept of Kirchabader, Kirchabader. When you get called about your spirituality, you get called. You're no longer capable of climbing above the concept of being cold in your spirituality. What is cold and warm in spirituality? Cold is when you are, do the same thing you did all your life, yeah. and you do it again. Cold is just no excitement. Same, same. Like unfortunately, people who 
go to synagogue. You know, they come and told me, and some friend around me was shocked, and they tell me the synagogue is really boring. And I look at them and say, you're right. And the two rabbi was there and said to me, how dare you talk like this? Synagogue is boring. I said, it is boring. What excited about synagogue? You don't have, uh, what do you call it, those uh, 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 pictures yes. of, 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 of I don't know who on the picture or, or Van Gogh or, or what is uh, Da Vinci or on the ceiling or, woo, ha, woo, woo, you have wall, you have wall. What do you have, you have wall? So he said to me, why are you supporting that guy who said it's, it's boring? Because it is boring. That's what the beauty about synagogue. Everything needs to be boring. So you will be the one that's exciting. The people are supposed to be the exciting part of the synagogue. If you're looking for the synagogue to excite you, you're on the wrong track. You're on the wrong way of consciousness. You got to get on fire. That's the beauty. But if the synagogue will be this, what are you going to do? Oh my God, oh my God, this is so beautiful. Oh my God, oh, blah, 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 blah. No, it's nothing going on. And this, this area has to be on fire from excitement. Fire from looking to love the creator. From fire to be connected to something strong. But if, if you just want it to be exciting, what is exciting? Same story from last year. I don't know if you know that. The Torah is a roll. So those of you who don't know the Torah, it's a, it's a scroll. And it's, I don't know if you know how it works. You, those of you who are old enough, in the old days we used to have a tape. You know what the tape is? The thing with the two rolls on two sides? You know? Exactly. I mean, some people, I tell my kids, this is tape. They saw it, they say, oh my God, what is that? And then they start pulling the thing in the middle out. Whoa, what is that? It's called a tape. Okay? Huh? Cassette. Cassette. Oh, it's called cassette. I'm sorry. Cassette. Cassette. I'm not that old. I didn't know the name. So, what it does, it rolls from beginning to end. Beginning to end. And then what you do, you start all over. The Torah, you read Beshalach. I don't know if you want, want to know that. Last year and this time, we read Beshalach too. <laughs> it's so exciting. It's so exciting. Read the same story again. Oh my God. How many times you do it? Well, it depends on your age. You 52, 52 times. 60, 60 times. Yes. What if you read all the commentary? What are you going to do in shul? No pictures. The people seem boring. And I have the same rolling of the Torah going back from place to place. The old thing is the same. You are the one who's supposed to be different. Not the thing. It's like people getting married. How long is this love would last if you're going to look for it to be different? It's not going to last. Are you different about it? That will last forever. Are you different about the relationship? Are you changing about the relationship? If yes, good, you're gonna get excited. But if you're sitting there and say, I hope, you know, she or he will become nicer, better, better personality, and they get younger with the years. <laughs> Not happening. Not happening. It's like two father and son that never saw uh, escalator, elevator before and they're coming and uh, uh, the wife you know is walking into the elevator and the elevator go up now the father and the son never saw elevator before so look at it what is two metal door get close and then it open and a young woman come out say oh my god can, 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 did you see that bring our grandmother right away put her in that box <laughs> That's how people think about life. How this will change. Not how my eyes will change. Not how my heart will change. Not how my mind will change. We're not changing the, the me. We want to change the it. This is. This is. That's called Amalek. Amalek is make you think that everything around you need to change. It, it crush you because it makes you cold about the excitement about the creator. Yes, you need to have creator in your life. You do. You need to have a divine. You have many reasons why you need to have it. But first reason, so you remember that you're nothing. Yes, you do need to remember you're nothing if you want to be free. If you think you're somebody, you will be in prison for the rest of your life. 
when you realize you're nobody, you're free. I know it's contradicted to everything you're thinking about. Because once you discover the me, then you feel like I'm in control. Really? You're in control? You know how many me there is in a hospital right now? Many me. Many. Me, the M-E, oh, a lot of them. When I go visit people in a hospital, there are many me. Until when they get to hospital, slowly, slowly, they become not me. Meaning they lose control. They no longer have that ego that I'm special. And they realize they have to surrender. I'm not threatening you. I'm not telling you if you don't do this, that's what's going to happen. That's whoever I tell you this, that's nonsense. There's no such a thing. Everybody has the journey. So whatever you're going to be on a spiritual journey, it's not going to make your life better. Or whatever you're not going to be on a spiritual journey, it's not going to make your life worse. Being on a spiritual journey, that's the gift. Not being on a spiritual journey, that's the punishment. It has nothing to do with the result that's going to happen. Your movie's already been written. Your cassette has already been set. How you're going to go about it, that's up to you. You want to go good about it or not good about it. Shabbat is the only thing in the world that allows you to set your movie from scratch again. Every Shabbat. If you do it correctly. If you do three suudot, three meals. If you do this, this but not in just release weight. What happens if you lie in bed all Shabbat and do nothing? It's also good. If that's all what you're capable to do, do good. Because I see people worry about the telephone, no, who's going to call you? So I always ask them to bring the phone to the Shabbat. And I always tell them, hi, nice to meet you, Dr. Kantarovich. Is that your name? <laughs> so no, I'm not, I'm not a doctor. My name is Kantarovich, but I'm not a doctor. No, oh, you seem like carry the phone, your urgency, what's going on? <laughs> do, you, do, you have, do you have kids all over the world? Maybe after October 7, they, they serve somebody secretly? No, I don't have kids. Oh, you don't have kids. It's got to be the dog. Maybe you have a sick dog that you want to know. What's, no, I don't have a dog. So why, why, why the phone? I don't know. I had the phone on Thursday, Wednesday, you, Shabbat different. If I send you an airplane and you're going to go tell the captain, Captain, my father and mother always open the window when we drive from New York to Miami. We open the window so it will be fun. That's how we drove in our cars. So the captain will tell you, yes, in the car you're allowed to open the window. But if you open the window, in the airplane, the pressure, there, there is a problem in 35,000 feet. There is a problem here. Shabbat is going to a different dimension. In that dimension, you act differently. It's not a punishment. Many people look at Shabbat as a punishment. It's a reward. You're tapping into place. You're getting the diamond you need. And then you come down to this world. That's what Shabbat is. Don't take it in a religious way. Take it in a knowledge way. Like the Ari teacher, the Karabai Isaac Luria teacher. So remember... What if all this reason of Amalek happened? Remember the brother sold Joseph. When the brother sold Joseph, it created Midat Adin. It created judgment attribute. You need to remove the judgment. What is the way to remove that judgment? What is the secret? Shabbat. Every time you have judgment on you, you feel things not moving right, make Shabbat a little bit better. Buy extra flour. Buy myrtle. Buy a more better wine. Clean the house. Make sure the old tables are covered with tablecloth. Nice one. <coughs> Put extra candle for a tzaddik. That's what Shabbat does for you. It removes the bidat adim. If not, unfortunately, Amalek. Who's going to fight Amalek? Yoshua. Why Dafka Yoshua is coming from Ephraim. Who is Ephraim? The son of Joseph. Only the tribe of Joseph can fight Amalek. Because the only reason Amalek is there is to punish Bnei Israel for selling their own brother to slavery to Egypt. That was the only reason. So the way you remove Amalek is by Shabbat. So people are not into Shabbat. This is, by the way, it's not my stuff. This has come from Zohar Chadash on Beshalach. Just if you want to know Mekorot. Zohar Chadash in Beshalach. But they asked me not to use too many books on the desk, so I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I have more things I want to say, but I'm not going to say, but just that. So just remember the Hashivut, the important of the Shabbat, the importance of doing it, not in a fanatic, just religious way, with an understanding. What type of judgment do you have in your life? Write it down before Shabbat. Pray on it. Women, would you light candle? Oh, when you light candle, at that moment, you just, when you just do the matches, before you light the candle, at that moment, or lighter, before the light touch the candle, that moment, that it's called the zero in Kabbalah, that this is the moment this is the moment which is holiest or more holy than actually lighting the candle. That moment, just before, just the before part. That's 
That's very powerful. At that moment, at that moment, at that, shh, before, all the light in the world, everything, the angel get quiet. The angel actually sitting right and left to you in that moment, every woman. There is two angels next to you. And by the way, we're preparing for you a little gift, right? A gift that we will give to people that you want to give, like a candle and matches, so you can carry it if you're traveling, if you go somewhere, it will be always with you in your bag to be free of charge. Everybody can have it. So we're working on it. It's going to arrive here in a few weeks, hopefully. And then everybody can have their own two candles. Wherever you travel, wherever you go, boom, you have your two candles, you have matches, you have the baracha, so you do it. And remember, for the men too, those of you not married yet, and hopefully you will be married soon, with your badzuk, with your soulmate. When you light the candle, also, the Shekhinah is with you. Remember that, that that moment of Shabbat is one of the most powerful moments. Unfortunately, because Friday is the time between the darkness and the light, the darkness has to go and the light has to come in, that's where the dark side is sitting. That's what the dark angel is sitting. It's exactly sitting there to create fight between people. Remember that. The fight between people has to happen on Shabbat. That's why a lot of Kabbalists become mute from 1 p.m. They don't talk. The wife will tell them this. They just write it down. I don't want to talk. They're afraid. They know this is the time people fight. They got to fight. Fight will happen on Friday. You cannot ignore it. On the salt, too salty, too much celery. The soup is too hot. What happened to the meat? Oh, you forgot the challah. What happened to the wine? How come you didn't buy a candle? The candle should be white. It shouldn't be... <laughs> fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it. Remember that? Just remember that. But Shabbat can solve everything. Okay? Now, because we have a short time, and usually people ask me to do meditation, so I'm going to do just uh, a short meditation. So just... Close your eyes, please. Close your eyes. I'm going to take you. Those of you who have been in Tzfat, good. Those of you who have never been in Tzfat, also good. But I want you to see yourself uh, above, those of you who know the area, where the mikveh of the Arizal, where the Arizal berry, just on top of the mountain there. I want you to see yourself in, a, I don't know if this hotel still exists, Malon Ron. It's a two-star hotel or one-and-a-half-star hotel. Okay? So, <laughs> And I want you to see you there, okay? And I want you to see welcoming the Shabbat in Tzfat. I want you to see yourself lighting the candle. You can feel the, the cold wind coming from the mountain there. And I want you, I'm asking you, when you light those two candles, before you're lighting them, I want you to see that you're sending this light not to you this time. You're sending the light to the people that are in the cave in Gaza. You're sending this light to the children that need to go back to their mother and father. You're sending this light to the people who need to cure their injury, whatever happened to them. So just stand in front of the candle and before you light it, in Tzvat, in Malonron, above the Ariza, make sure that you, when, as you light it, you see that the light coming out of the flame and that light will go and spread all over. It's a light of cure, it's a light of safety, it's a light of solution. It's a light of clarity. And as you do that, as you do that, that light, you can see the whole land of Israel is fulfilled with amazing light. And as you do that, think about one area in your life where you're broken. Is it health issue? Is it spiritual issue? What is it that you need help with? Is it relationship? Is it love? Send that light that you send to Israel, reflect it back to you. Where in your life? Is it your body? Is it your soul? Is it your heart? Is it your emotion? Is it your children? Is it your friend? Is it your business? Send the light from Israel to the area where you need the most help. Thank you. Before I let you go, don't forgive, forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, okay? Don't forget to do that. And another thing I would like to remind you, remember that uh, Wednesday night is Tu Bishvat. And Tu Bishvat, this is, uh, those of you not married, that's, a dead, that's the time of uh, soulmate. Uh, it's not just Tu Be'av, Tu Bishvat as well. There is a reason, and Bnei Sasra talk a lot about it. So make sure... Uh, that you join us. Is it here, Debbie? Mm -hmm. What time? 7.30. 7.30 on Wednesday. You can join us 
and uh, everybody work. Is it free or money? Huh? It's not free. You have to register, sorry. Or bring your fig with you, I guess. No? And it will be pre -hadash. You have to have a pre. Uh, it will be, it will be uh, alcohol, I think, if I'm not mistaken, a white wine and a red wine that I usually do. So, uh, so you're welcome to come or welcome to register. And we'd love to see all of you coming here and doing the meditation. Those of you who are single, make sure uh, you dress as if you dress for a wedding. Okay, I'm sorry. So you know, we know you're single. Okay, those of you who are single, so we can recognize, okay, we got a single one, you to the right, you the, okay, so make sure you dress really, really nice, almost like Shabbat, the reason for that is not just for the people who are there, it's actually for the Shekhinah, it's actually that you are awakening very powerful things from above to below, those of you who are already kind of engaged and you have, make sure your partner will be with you uh, in the same time, if they're able to make it, that will be a wonderful thing. Wednesday night. For the men, don't forget on Thursday we have Bet Midrash between 6 to 8. We study men and we study Talmud Asar Sfirot. Uh, do we have something else? Uh, other than that, uh, enjoy the sushi. Enjoy each other. Be careful, it's cold outside. Mm -hmm.